we treat content almost as if you were a, having a face-to-face -face meeting with someone. We all know like if you're trying to get deals or bring, bring on the investors and stuff, it's all about rapport. It's all about that, that connection. But when you understand where it comes from and you integrate it into content, it becomes super effective for you where people will watch your videos and then they feel like they know you without ever meeting you. Welcome to the Bulletproof Cashflow Podcast. Let's get into the show. Hey everyone, this is Augustino. Marketing and branding is key to the building of your connection with your audience of investors, brokers, and deals. Over the past several years, video has emerged as the way to expand your reach and has proven to become the way to build your tribe. Today's guest, he's got a very, very deep understanding of these very important aspects of the marketing function. Through his programs, he helps entrepreneurs combine YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and all these other social media platforms with an underlying strategy to scale your reach in front of the people that you need to connect with so they hear from you. And as a leading expert in video marketing strategies, he's been part of numerous web-based companies over the past eight years. Now today, as the founder of Sold With Video, he and his team, they help businesses increase their reach through very creative video marketing. With all that, I'd like to welcome my good friend, Brandon Lucero to the show. Hey, Brandon, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here and I love talking marketing and video. So it's going to be a fun time. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. If you like what Brad has to say, you can reach him through his website, soldwithvideo.com. I highly recommend you check out his content. It's great stuff. If you like our content, please don't forget to leave a comment and rate the show. And finally, you can text the word freedom to 202-410-4202. You'll receive a free ebook, The Bulletproof Guide to Finding a Broker. Okay, Brandon, let's start with some of your background in video marketing. How'd you get all this started? I basically started because I thought I knew video. I'd worked for a company in the past. And then just like you and probably a lot of people listening, I've always had a desire to be an entrepreneur. And that desire just doesn't go away, no matter how good of a paying job you have or anything like that. So I left and I started a, the company sold with video. And at the time I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to do video for real estate agents. They need video for their listings and all of this stuff. And I built out this big website and it was like, perfect. My goal was I'm like 10 grand a month and my website will take orders. The, the orders will get sent to a virtual assistant who make the video, who will then put it back in the website and then give it back to the agent. And I'm, I'm out. Like I'm, I'm the middleman is the website. And then the only problem was I just didn't get any sales. <laughs> I didn't get any customers. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a problem. Uh, so from there, I kind of learned like, how do I rank the videos? How do I SEO them and get them ranked in YouTube and all that stuff? And they were getting ranked in Google. And that led me down the path of learning like YouTube marketing and how like keyword optimization and search engine optimization, which then led me down the path of understanding like copy and messaging. And then now what we've done is we've expanded beyond just YouTube, but how do we create a video strategy that is like synergistic. So if someone goes onto Facebook, then Instagram, then YouTube, it's the same message and it's getting the right message to the right person at the right time to really build the rapport, the thought leadership, the connection and the authority. And that's kind of where we are today. And I mean, that, and that's just, you know, my eight year version in, in about three minutes, but, but yeah, that's, that's how we got started. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I know your whole backstory from following your content myself, which is very, very good. And I guess the thing is, is that one thing that we tell our, our audience is that whenever you're looking for investors for your deals, you have to start this process very early on. I mean, you're not waiting till you find a deal and then you're scrambling to find your investors. That journey starts from the time you decide to do a deal. That's when you have to start really finding investors. It's at that point. So using video, have have you, what, what recommendations you have as far as using video to actually establish those connections with, with people on the outside? Like how, how would you recommend people do that? It all starts with the content. I think a lot of people, when they look at content, they're like, okay, I want to build like authority or I want to build rapport or connection with people. Um, they start with like trying to teach. And so they, they try just to show like, oh, look how, like how much I know or how good of how much, how knowledgeable I am in this space or whatever it is. And so I, we treat content almost as if you were a, having a face-to-face -face meeting with someone. We all know like if you're trying to get deals or bring, bring on the investors and stuff, it's all about rapport. It's all about that, that connection. And a lot of people don't understand how rapport and connection is actually built and, and established and developed. 
But when you understand where it comes from and you integrate it into content, it becomes super effective for you where people will watch your videos and then they feel like they know you without ever meeting you. You're basically building a connection off of the deep values and the core values and the identities that you have. And most people just don't realize that they teach, they teach, they teach. And it's like, well, if you're just teaching all the time, how are you planning on like establishing that rapport and connection with people? Cause I can tell you right now, if, and, and you're a perfect example of this, we were talking before the show, like, if you need investors, you have people that know who you are, know your core values, know that you're, you're, you have knowledge in a certain thing, you bring results. The rapport is already built. It's 10 times easier for you to go find people now. And that's what content allows you to do. And so we still need the teaching, but if you understand those core concepts, your content could be like gasoline to the fire. And most people yeah. just, they just don't know it. That's right. Well, I mean, I know that you're not really big on like just pummeling the internet with how to videos. That's not your thing, right? right. <laughs> I know that much I do know, right? So yeah. what sort of creative content would you recommend for people to actually do then? Well, I think there's a couple of things like we still do want the how to content, but what most people do is they do it a hundred percent of the time. And it's just like, there's nothing separating you from the next guy who knows the same relative information as you do. So what we do is we focus on core values first. So when we work with someone, I'll say, okay, what are your core values that you want to bring into business? And so I'll just use me as an example, like my number one core values family. Number two is um, like entrepreneurship or success. Number three is money. And number four is in integrity. Um, and three and four will be switched, but those are like basically my top four. So I look at those and I go, okay, which ones do I want to incorporate into my business? AKA who do I want to attract? Well, I look at the top one family. If I don't want to attract parents, then I will just say, you know what? I'm not going to incorporate that into my content. If I did want to attract parents, I'd say, yeah, great. I, I will do that. Now, what most people don't understand is that when you figure out your core values, your top four or five core values, and you number them and place them in order from most important to least important, what you're really doing is listing your strongest identities. And so for me, it was family and entrepreneurship, my top two. Now, if someone was to publish a video out there said that parents make the best entrepreneurs, I'm going to click on that piece of content. And if the person is talking about how parents make the best entrepreneurs, I'm going to resonate with that message so deeply because it in, literally ingrains two of my strongest identities. So what I would say to you is look at what are the core values that you have that you want to bring into your business? What are the identities that those core values are? And then incorporate those identities into your content and then reinforce those identities saying that it's good. It's, it's, this is where success is, or this is what you need to do. And what will happen is the people who have those same identities will feel so deeply to you that they're going to feel immediate rapport and connection to you. So if you do that over and over and over again, then they start to build up this no like, and trust without ever meeting them. Does that, does that make sense? That's beautiful. No, I love it. Love it. Love it. So part of it is establishing those, those four, those, those four key aspects of what your tribe needs to be. So they resonate with you. You create content based on that. And I guess it sounds like too, using some online tools, that kind of thing, you could figure out what is even trending. Right. I mean, is yeah. that, is that one strategy? Just figure out what's trending out there right now that might fit into one of these four, these four buckets and then tailor the content to that. Right. I mean, is that, is that a strategy that, uh, yeah, that? I, I kind of look at it as like a, um, as a trifecta. Cause you, so like, no one's going to watch one video and be like, cool. I like, I'm going to call them and just try to work with them or whatever. I mean, maybe, but typically what happens is people consume multiple pieces of your co your content. So what I would do is, and you can do this with Facebook and you can do this with Instagram and YouTube pretty easily where you can actually, let's just say you do a how to video. Like let's say you find a, a trending topic and you do a video on that topic and you push it out there and people are consuming it because they, you know, it's trending. It's a, it's a hot topic right now, but then, the next day you hit them with a connection video and you hit them with like, here's who I am. This is what I stand for. This is how you find success. This is what we do. Now they're not only do they now know that you are an expert because you just taught them something, but now they know who you are as a person 
and they're connecting with you on the deepest level possible, then imagine the next day you hit them with like a leadership style video that I would call, we call them thought reversals, but they're essentially thought leadership videos. Um, one of those, and now they see you as a thought leader and someone who thinks differently. And, and they also know how smart you are and how knowledgeable you are. But now they're connecting with you on a deep level without, a, not, without them even realizing that they're connecting on that deep level. It's just, you're building those rapport. And when you can have this like trifecta of content hitting someone, that's when it's like adding gasoline to the fire. That's when people will like hit you up out of the blue or you send an email to your list and you're like, hey guys, have an opportunity for you. They're like, I'm in, yeah, love you. You're smart, you know what you're talking about. You have the solution to all of my problems and I, I just love who you are as a person. And it just, again, it makes selling 10 times easier when you have a like trifecta of content going on. Yeah, I mean, man, I'll tell you, that's, that's beautiful because what it involves is actually planning out what you're going to say as opposed to just verbal diarrhea all over the, <laughs> the internet, which, which there's a lot of that that goes on. And, uh, but you're, but what you're talking about doing is doing it on purpose. I mean, creating yeah. the content on purpose. And for some of the listeners out there right now, I mean, they may not be the best writers in the world, but you can get help for stuff like that. You know, you can use iWriter or whatever, yeah. I suppose, but it really comes down to just thinking about, what what the content needs to say and, and do it or i guess well you guys do this stuff too right i mean you guys come up with with the whole branding messaging and all that too yeah i mean we help we help people with with it um through courses and programs and a service and, and stuff like that but yeah i mean it basically just comes down to being very like you said uh very intentional with what you're doing and the, the beautiful part about all of it is that when you truly understand like the identity piece is you literally get to attract anyone you want so a lot of times we hear from people who are like, I just can't attract the right people into my audience, or I always attract people that don't have money, or I always attract blah, 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 blah. And the reason why they're attracting them is because of the language they're using. And so for you, if you wanted to attract investors, like really wealthy investors, you have to figure out what are the core values and identities that they all share. And all you have to do is just figure out those identities, place them in the titles of your 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 topics and then reinforce it. Talk about how it's a good thing. And then what happens is that will attract them. Number one, they realize that you are the same thing and you, you share that common identity and value. Then the rapport is established. So when you understand this, you can literally pull out whoever you want out of the world to come in and consume your content and come into what I would call your ecosystem of messaging or your ecosystem of, of content. Right, right. But I think the hardest part though, is trying to figure out, how to how to figure out what that avatar looks like and that avatar by the way means that 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 person's what what they are right what they're yeah. so basically those, those qualities that you had mentioned so and how do you figure that out i mean it's for for someone out there let's say for instance they are trying to find their tribe of investors so to speak so right. they may not be investors themselves in the sense that they, they, maybe they're just a deal locator, but they're trying to find people to invest in those properties. Like, do that. How do they identify that? Do they go online for something or like what? Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great question. So the first thing is, is, is you have to understand like the messaging and a lot of this content, it'll evolve over time. So like what I started with two years ago when we started this new direction, it's not the same as what we did today. And it obviously gets stronger and more fine tuned as we start to get deeper into it. So if someone is like brand new and they're like, well, I don't know what the investors are going to hold or the, what kind of identities or core values they have. I would always say, just start with the core values that you are, like who are you as a person? And so you can find any list of core values online. There's, you know, there's, there's hundreds of them, hundreds of core values. You just go through, you spend the time and pick your top 10 that are the most important to you. And then what I would do is if you start, like, let's say you're finding investors, just start talking about what you know about investing and then dropping in these core values in separate, like you can even call them motivational, inspirational videos, but start talking about like, hey, here's, here's how to do one, two, three of investing in one video. And then the next video it says, you know, parents make the best uh, investors. Like if you wanna attract parent investors, and then you'll start to attract parents and, and investors. And if you start to realize, oh, you know what? Parents don't really make the best investors. Well, then don't do it again. And what happens is over time, it starts to get more fine tuned as you, the more you experiment, you play with it, the clearer you begin to, you begin to get. So 
I always talk about how it's a snowball at the top of the mountain where it's like really small and kind of slow when you push it down. But as you put, as it moves down the hill, it gets faster and bigger and it gets way more momentum until it's an unstoppable force. And that's what happens is a lot of people like there'll be a lot of people listening to this podcast and go, Oh my gosh, that sounds great. And they'll try one or two videos and like, ah, it doesn't work. And then they don't do anything. And it's like, they didn't, you have to give it enough time to be able to get the results, see what's working, fine tune it. And then you just become an unstoppable force. But most people aren't willing to do that. They're not willing to put out content for a year to like discover that. I can tell you right now, like we're two years into this new direction and sales have never been easier because I understand everything and what works and what doesn't work on such a deep level, on a deep level that most people will never get to. But you also do a high degree of testing as well. I mean, yeah. there's one ad that I saw that uh, we talked about in the green room, but you're, you're basically flying like, on, like a Superman type scenario. And I think you're saying you got like 2 million, 2 million views on an ad of all things, right? And yeah. just an amazing ad, but you tested it and you had like 10 different ads It tested the best and that's the one you ran with, right? Yeah, like we, and that's, that's the other thing too, is everything. And that's what kind of what I'm talking about is you put one out and you're like, cool, parents don't make the best. That's, that's a test, right? Like you're, you're constantly putting out more and more content and you're testing it. And so another thing too is like what's so beautiful about Facebook and Instagram is that you can put a video out and they'll let you run that video as, a, as an, an ad. It's not really an ad. You're basically, the objective is to get views. Like they will go find views of your target audience. And sometimes it's like a penny per view. So for every dollar you put in, like let's say you wanted to find investors, you put this video on investing, you put it on Facebook, you, you give it a, a dollar to go find people that invest. It's going to give you a hundred views for that dollar of investors. And it's like, you get instant feedback like, like that. It's like right then and there. And so the more content you're putting out, the more things that you're doing, the faster the results tend, tend to come in. And that's why I love video and online is a lot of people will platforms want video. So they'll either give it more exposure or give you a very inexpensive way to get that exposure and allows you to test literally overnight. And so with that ad that you're referring to, we were running um, opt-in ads. So we were getting people to opt into like our free training and we ran 20 ads and that one like right off the bat did really well. So we turned all the others off. We put all of our money into that one. And in like three weeks, we got 2 million views on it and we had a really successful launch. So it is, like you said, it's, it really is all about the testing and then fine tuning. Excellent. And I mean, it isn't like you stopped after that either. Cause you had more ads after that. I saw, yeah. I saw them. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's again, it's right message to the right person at the right time which is why I love those platforms because they literally allow you to track like, okay, the, someone saw this video. Now I want them to see this one. Then they saw this one. I want them to see this one. So what it is, is that you're even when someone's consuming your content, you're like, you know that they love the content, but you can now control what messages they're seeing at, at what point. So what starts to happen is you appear like you're everywhere to that one person, even though you're not everywhere, but to them you are. And that becomes really powerful, especially when you can kind of like, create that trifecta that I was talking about, you know, a little earlier in the podcast interview, you can create and control that trifecta. So you're, you're literally exposing your identities and connecting, you're showing the, the authority, you're showing the thought leadership all within a week. And so you can really build connection really fast with people when you use that format. As far as someone then getting started and, and trying to create some of this content, I mean, some people don't, they don't like the whole camera thing. That's probably one of the biggest aspects is that people get really shy in front of a camera, right? So yeah. maybe they'd rather write something or something along those lines, which does not obviously have the same effect. I mean, what, what sort of recommendations are for those people that, that don't really want to record? I mean, just tell them get over it or like, what, what do you, what do you do? What do you tell them? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of things. So like, I mean, you can even do a podcast, like podcasts are obviously really popular and you can still incorporate a lot of the same aspects that we're talking about now, although you lose a little bit of that functionality of right message at the right time because unless you take the podcast and upload it to like Facebook or Instagram but really at the end of the day like people think they are afraid of the camera and they're not so you know I can ask every single person who told me I'm afraid of the camera and say okay have you ever had your picture taken and not been afraid have you ever taken a selfie and not been afraid and the answer is always almost always gonna be yes and it's like clearly you're not afraid of the camera what usually what it is is they're afraid of judgment and what I ask people then is like, okay, great. So you're afraid of being 
judge. You realize you're going to, that's all humans do is judge. You're going to be judged whether you do it or you don't. I would rather be judged for going after something that I want versus being judged for not going after it at all. And really at the end of the day, what's more important, sitting there and being afraid or creating your dreams, you know, helping other people, you know, like finding the, like for you guys, like finding for you, finding the, the right investors. To me, that's far more important than this little fear. And it really is one of those things where you do it once, it's easier the next time. And then it's easier the next time after that. And then to the point where it just becomes not even an issue. It's just a normal, normal thing. But I understand some people still won't do it. Uh, so you could totally do like um, slideshow type stuff. It's just not as effective. I mean, like if you see me talking on a screen versus a PowerPoint presentation, like it's, it's not going to be as powerful. Like imagine seeing me, like a cele- imagine s- seeing a celebrity and all you see, you hear their voice and you see slides on the screen versus seeing them all the time. And then you see them in person. It's way more powerful to see the actual person, but there's ways around it for sure. When you're, when you're putting together this content, then it, I guess one of the things is that people don't have the same, I guess, access to budget for instance, right? It's, yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of just picking up a phone and just doing that. Uh, versus some of the stuff that you've done in your ads are just, they're phenomenal. Clearly you, you guys invested a lot of money in the, into those. I mean, does, does, does the quality have anything to do with, with how things convert and, and uh, maybe for people are looking for investors. I mean, does that raw gritty cell phone footage would that you think it might still work out better? Cause it seems more authentic than doing the polished sort of thing. Like what, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah. I mean, so we have a ton of clients too. So the, the advice I'm about to give doesn't just come from my own stuff. It's, it's tested through a lot of different businesses and the trend right now that we're seeing is, is actually a combo of both, but it's in different ways. So when it's like the very upfront top, we call it top of funnel content. So it's like that, like consistent content that you're doing the authority type stuff or uh, sorry, authentic type stuff usually works better. So like, live streams or video camera videos where you're just posting to Instagram or YouTube, they actually tend to do better than high end professional videos. A lot of people like put on a suit and stand in front of like a white background and be very professionals. Those don't really work as well as like that raw authentic feel. However, when it comes to the ads where you're asking someone to either buy or opt in for something, um, a blend usually works and we, we will split test just a regular like selfie video and then a professional made video. But when I say professional made, I'm not talking about like suit in front of a, a green screen. I'm talking more about like, like the one you saw where it's kind of like attention getting where I jump in the air and then I'm frozen. It's like those types of things that, and really what we're trying to do is stop the scroll. Like someone's on Facebook or on Instagram, we're trying to like capture the attention once we have the attention, then we let the message take over at that point. And so it's just different, but like I've seen a lot of people make millions of dollars online just using videos with their phone. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated or high production at all. Right. I think what sounds like though, as long as you're hitting those three key things, you're intentional about your footage, you're intentional about what it is your message looks like. And that's, that seems to be like the winning combination to start there. And even in the world of real estate, though, when we're, we're say we're trying to find investors or trying to find uh, people to help in terms of education or whatever, it's the same sort of thing, just two different, two different avatars that we're attacking, right? Two different yeah. people that, that, are, that we need to get their attention. And I think for the most part, the people are listening, obviously, it's going to be investors. How do I get my hands on more investors? <laughs> I would imagine yeah. is what they're looking to do, right? Yeah, so, yeah, 100, 100%. So just keep in mind, too, like there, and there's always ways to blend Thing, and blend them together too. And it just, it really does come down to testing, just figuring out what works best with your audience and really what makes you more comfortable when you're on camera, because that comes off on camera as well. So now, given where we are right now in the market cycle, given where, where what's going on, what are your general thoughts around the application of marketing when it comes to real estate or maybe other, other businesses in general? Like, what are you seeing right now? Do you see a tightening of budget around marketing and sales? Or are you seeing... Uh, no change at all, or are they spending more? Like, what what are you seeing right now? Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. It's either like people are on board or they're not. <laughs> There's like no middle ground right now. Like people are either, hey, we we need to save money, and the other people are just like, no, we need to go full force right now. Uh, I do know this right now. Um, ad costs have never been cheaper. 
so what was happening before like Corona and COVID in this pandemic had hit was Facebook ads and in, 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 uh, Instagram ads were like an all time high because so many people were jumping on board. It's just a supply and demand. Then what happened as soon as it hit, people started pulling back all their budgets. It became this open big platform where the, the demand is super low, but the supply is at an all time high. So right now, like if you do have the money and you want to start testing this stuff, like, and you want it to get it as cheap as possible, now is the time to do it. Excellent. Uh, what about LinkedIn? Is LinkedIn the same way? Yeah. So LinkedIn's a little bit different because they don't, um, as far as I know, they don't give you the, ex like you can't upload a video, then pave to get exposure on that video, but you can run ads to get people to like opt in for something or buy something. Um, but organically, LinkedIn has been phenomenal. Like out of all the platforms, and I think one of the reasons why is there's so much video content, obviously on YouTube, because that's what it is. But even Facebook and Instagram, there's just so much like video content, but not a lot on LinkedIn. It's a pretty relatively new, new thing for LinkedIn. So when you put it on there, the organic reach and consumption has just been through the roof. Um, and we've just noticed, and I, you know, you and I were talking earlier, it's like, it's a very good place to go for more professional type stuff. So if you were looking for people with money or executives or things like that, LinkedIn's a, a usually a far better platform to go after versus like Instagram. Cause it's so like wishwashy. These people are there, but they're not really there to talk business. So it's, it's a little different, but yeah, if, if for you, for your industry and what you guys do, I would say LinkedIn is, is a hundred percent must. Well, if you have to give your 20 year old self a word of advice, what'd you tell them? Don't wait. Like don't wait on anything. I, I just think so many people, they don't understand that you, there's lessons that have to be learned and you have a desire to start a business or to go do something that desire is not going to go away no matter how hard you try. It just won't. And there's going to be lessons that you're going to have to learn. So by delaying them two years, it doesn't matter. So you're going to have to go through them in two years. So just go, go do it. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to get done and you'll learn the lesson or get the result you want. All right, guys. Well, if you want to reach out to Brandon, you can reach him through his company website at soldwithvideo.com. I hope you got a lot of great insight on the importance of, of the use of video when it comes to creating a brand around your message to pull in investors. Okay. So check out his, his material. He's got great stuff. They have just amazing stuff. I'm telling you right now, go check it out. All right. Take care guys. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the Bulletproof Cashflow podcast. 